Hi, I'm Tyler Fultz. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is in nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. If you like this video, please leave me a like down below, and go ahead and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. If you didn't like this video, please let me know what I can do better down in the comments. Always looking to improve. Today I'm going to be looking at another Kurzgesagt video called The Day the Dinosaurs Died, Minute by Minute. This is another requested one. Thanks again for requesting all these videos. I really appreciate it. Let's take a look. One of the greatest illusions in life is continuity. 66 million years ago, the continuity of the dinosaurs had been going on for around 165 million years already, and it didn't seem this would change any time. One interesting thing is I recall as a kid learning it as 65 million years ago, and now I'm here in 66. Not sure if our estimates have gone <laughs> more accurate or if we really just rolled over another million within the past few decades. Soon, the world was warm and pleasant, and most of the land was covered with lush forests and an incredible diversity of trees, flowers, ferns, and trillions of critters. Dinosaurs were ubiquitous and had diversified into hundreds of species of all shapes and sizes. Titanotaurs, large, gentle giants, shared the world with famous beasts like Tyrannosaurus rex or Edmontosaurus. Heck, I like how much our views of dinosaurs and what we thought they looked like have changed. I remember when Jurassic Park first came out that um, how different a T-Rex is, is like this big scaly thing and now they have more avian features. It's, it's fascinating. Anodon hunted in the undergrowth while Edmontosaurus wandered coastlines and swamps. An ancient paradise, a world of plenty full of life. 66 million years ago, maybe on a Tuesday afternoon, life was the same as it had been the day before, or a thousand years before, or pretty much a million years before. Things were good for our feathered dinosaur buddies, until a tiny, tiny detail in the sky changed. If there were dinosaurs watching the stars, one night they may have noticed the appearance of a new star, a tiny dot that for many weeks slowly became bigger and brighter. Until one fateful day, it looked like another small moon in the night sky. And then it faded from sight as it dipped into Earth's shadow. For a few more hours, the illusion of continuity was upheld until it was not anymore. In the morning, the object suddenly appears again. Now, almost as large as the sun in the sky and growing every moment, heading for the coast near the Yucatan Peninsula. It takes the asteroid only seconds to pass through the thin layer between space and the ground to make contact, as it enters the atmosphere at almost 60 times the speed of sound. Let's stop time. <laughs> that is one thing that a lot of those disaster movies like Armageddon or Deep Impact get wrong is how fast this thing is when it's coming at the Earth. Um, you see these big scenes of everyone standing in front, holding on to their loved ones, watching the uh, asteroid impacting when it's hypersonic. You're not going to see it, you're not going to hear it. It's just going to hit, and <laughs> people aren't even going to know what happened. <laughs> we see the unnamed asteroid about to commit speciesite. Larger than Mount Everest, it reaches from the ocean high into the atmosphere, higher than passenger planes would fly millions of years later. At this moment, the world was one way. In a fraction of a second, it would be fundamentally different. Let's make the transition. As the asteroid hits the shallow ocean and the bedrock below, the energy of billions of nuclear weapons is released all at once as the asteroid vaporizes. A flash of light illuminates the sky as an eerie bright white sphere grows over the... Beautiful, beautiful animation. ...of Mexico. 
bedrock melts into seething hot plasma at tens of thousands of degrees Celsius. The thermal radiation from the explosion travels at the speed of light and immediately burns everything within a radius of about 1,500 kilometers, while the energy from the impact pushes so hard against Earth's crust that it loses all strength and flows away from the impact site like a liquid, creating a hole 25 kilometers deep and 100 kilometers wide. The ocean is pushed back for hundreds of kilometers, like when a kid jumps into a puddle. As the crust bounces back, melted and flowing crust forms a temporary mountain stretching 10 kilometers into the sky. An incredible amount of material is blasted into the higher atmosphere or even out into space as much as 60 times the original mass of the asteroid. The violence of the strike is felt everywhere on Earth within minutes. A magnitude 11 earthquake may be the most powerful quake any living thing has ever witnessed in billions of years. It is so insanely strong that in India it might have shaken gigantic lava fields and causes volcanic eruptions that would last for 30,000 years and cover half of the Indian subcontinent with lava. Even on the side of Earth opposite the impact, the ground still moved by several meters. Nobody would sleep through this day. The gigantic explosion crashes against the atmosphere with unprecedented violence and causes a shockwave that reaches speed. It's fascinating to me, I know it's just the Earth shaking, that you can feel the effects on the other side of the planet long before the explosion actually even forms a mushroom cloud and starts rising to the atmosphere because of how fast the sound and the pressure waves travel through the Earth. Kind of like ringing a bell. <laughs> More than 1,000 kilometers per hour near the site of impact, similar to the hyper hurricanes on gas giants like Neptune. In middle America, basically any soil, vegetation or animal is just shredded into pieces and catapulted thousands of kilometers away. Now, I do like that they show what the shape of the continents looked like 66 million years ago. I keep seeing so many of these impacts as if what if it happened today, but keeping it authentic to the time of the dinosaurs is cool. The previously displaced oceans return. As the temporary mountain at the site of impact collapses, a ring of tsunamis as high as one kilometer, enough to cover all skyscrapers humans would ever build, heads in all directions. As they crash into the coasts of the continents surrounding the impact, they will drown thousands of kilometers of coastline. 15 hours later, some of the waves that get refracted around South America will still tower as much as 100 meters into the sky. But we still haven't talked about the worst thing yet. A lot of the debris yeeted into space will orbit Earth for... Th really? Yeet? <laughs> of years. Some may hit the moon or even Mars, but most of it comes right back. When things fall through the atmosphere at such speeds, they get very hot, as in hundreds of degrees hot. And this happens to millions of tons of material everywhere. This rapidly heats up the atmosphere to insane temperatures. We don't know exactly how hot it got or how long this heat shock lasted, but there are two ideas here. Either the air was heated to hundreds of degrees for a few minutes, or to thousands of degrees for around one minute. In any case, wow. the air became as hot as the inside of an industrial oven. How bad the global effects of this were is contested, but if enough heat reached the surface, a lot of plants and animals would have died very quickly if they couldn't. Is that everywhere? I guess it would if you're talking the, uh, all the re-entered ejecta from the, from the impact, but that's... That's crazy. Free <laughs> themselves or escape into caves. The heat, together with raining debris, also may have ignited material on forest floors and sparked wildfires as the earth rotated under the searing hot blue. In a few hours, massive wildfires were probably burning around the globe. Some of them may have lasted for months and turned earth into a horrifying, hot, hellish version of itself. As the day of the impact draws to an end, Many of the dinosaurs are already dead, but the worst is still to come. The gigantic plume of vaporized material reaches the upper atmosphere and spreads around the whole globe. Together with the soot from the burning planet and the aerosols generated at impact, the planet sinks into a deep darkness. Impact winner.
with only the remaining raging fires illuminating the scenery. Whatever plants survive the firestorms will now be starved for sunlight as global photosynthesis is temporarily shut down. Within days, temperatures crash as much as 25 degrees Celsius. The oceans were especially hard hit. The lack of sunlight killed over 90% of plankton, which formed the basis of the food web of marine life. Ultimately, this would kill off the large marine reptiles and ammonites that used to dominate the seas. The biosphere the survivors now find themselves in is like an alien landscape. Ash, debris and the burned remains of the formerly lush and blooming life cover the ground. The sky is dark and it's cold and fresh food is scarce while fungi thrive. For months and years, the planet will be a hostile and deadly place. The sudden global winter will last for decades. At least 75% of all species on Earth will just vanish from existence. And so, as the day ends, the world is suddenly different. The continuity that went on for millions of years is no more. The era of the dinosaurs is over. Just like that. Eventually, from the ashes of the old world, survivors emerged. Birds that are the direct descendants of the dinosaurs and mammals that would eventually become the dominant animals on the planet. Without the asteroid, who knows what life on Earth would look like today? Without the sudden disruption of dinosaur continuity that completely changed the planet and all life on it, we might have never had the opportunity to become what we are today. It's not clear how long the human era will last. So far, modern humans have been around for 0.1% of the time the dinosaurs were. And in this short amount of time, we've achieved impressive feats, from making the world our own to reaching space and splitting the atom. Yet our future and our long-term survival are not a given. If we're not careful, it could end in an instant, like the age of the dinosaurs ended. But in contrast to them, we know that our continuity is fragile, even if it doesn't feel like it. We can be prepared and be vigilant and hopeful. If we're lucky, our journey will go on for a long, long time. Speaking of journeys, we want to address something in the spirit of transparency. Kotzkazat has changed in the last two years. We've become more than a YouTube channel or animation studio and now also run a paper shop that sells hundreds of thousands of calendars, posters and notebooks. That's not a happy accident. Many of us have a background in graphic design. Paper products are our roots and we actually started out creating posters, books and print oh, infographics. We love that you can touch them, smell them, nerd about small details and printing techniques. Just like the channel, we started small and without great ambition. Step by step, we found the right printers and papers, learned about shipping and expanded our shop. We put a huge amount of research, love and hours into it because this is the only way we know how to do things. We don't just want to make generic merch, we want to, we want to make things that fit our mission of making science exciting and creating beautiful things. Things that persist and are made with high quality and love. Our shop gives us another outlet to do this and, as a nice side effect, has turned into our main source of income for everything we do on this channel, which also keeps us independent and our videos free for everyone. So, we want to build further on that and create more things that last. We've just started a new notebook line called Pocket Log that we'll expand on in the future. The first edition is a dinosaur-themed collection that will hopefully serve a future paleontologist well. There are loads of plans for sciencey stuff, more journals and calendars, and infographics. Year 12,022. Interesting. I'll have to look that up. Let us know what you would like us to make for your room, kids, classrooms, and yourself. In the end, the things we do work because you like them, and because you enable us to put thousands of hours into videos and hundreds of hours into posters and journals. Thank you so much for that. We're looking forward to making fun, science-y stuff for you, no matter if it's a video, a poster, or something else entirely. Thank you for watching. That's cool. I didn't realize they started off um, all making posters and various tangible media. I've always thought it was just a YouTube channel, but that's interesting.
they kind of got a little <laughs> more philosophical and out there referring to it as dinosaur continuity that suddenly ended. I guess that is one of those, uh, one of those things that, yes, um, things can come to an end quickly, but rather not, not in the sense of getting worried about it, but um, how I think they were just trying to get at how the dinosaurs um, really had no idea what was coming. <laughs> Let me know what your thoughts on that are in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.